God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Was that something in my place? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I heard it on the mic. Oh, oh, hey, baby. Come here, you. <laughs> Come here. Oh, this is my uh, daughter. <laughs> you oh, say hi? Hey. You say hi? Hello. How are you? <laughs> she, <laughs> what's going on? Did you oh. knock something over and make a loud noise? Huh? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, she's like eh, three months or something? Or what? No, she, she's a year and a half. Oh, a year and a half. So, wow. Ow. So she she definitely keeps us busy, that's for sure. Oh, my but, God. Um, wow. Anyways, I should intro you real quick. Um, OK. Hey, everybody. This is, this, uh, this is a long intro. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I am very happy and excited to have my friend Greg Manchez. Um, this is his second time doing the podcast. His work is um, some of my favorite illustration work out there. I'm a huge fan of, of painting and his brushwork and so on. And um, we're going to have a fun time today talking about his work and, and later on getting into the process. And uh, so for now, um, let's, just, let's just get this ball rolling since we've already been talking. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Gregory Manchez. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I didn't know we were on the intro when we were talking yeah. about climbing. Yeah. So. yeah, well, it's all right. I'll edit stuff out. But um, so how have you been? Like, what you been up to lately? How's it been going? It's been a, a crazy busy year, uh, off and on. Um, <clears throat> then I thought at the beginning of 21 that, you know, nothing's coming in. So by February, March, I thought uh, some of the calls I was getting, I was, I was just taking everything that came down the pike. And, yeah. and then I got myself pretty packed up with work that I'm still trying to dig my way out of. These are some of the paintings I'm doing a illustrated edition of, uh, the sun also rises by Hemingway. Oh yeah. And, um, also doing a fully super illustrated edition. That's classically letter pressed edition, um, of the picture of Dorian gray. Hmm. And I'll be painting that a step at a time so you see his demise in the painting and then uh i'm working on another illustrated book about 15 pieces for a special edition again of uh, who goes there which is uh the story they based the thing on and uh carpenter got that really right but they found another 30 pages in harvard or yale's archives or something like that and uh they're hmm. adding that into the story as well so we're going to illustrate that whole thing so i'm working on all that at one time wow that's pretty crazy so and, the you, you the story you're going to be starting to work on is like a continuation of the thing but that the, the horror movie or whatever i mean it's, I yeah that. okay it's the actual story itself oh, okay who goes there by john w campbell and um it's, it's wow. really a very cool story. It's it's uh, like I say, Carpenter got that right when he um, when he did the movie back in the eighties. But uh, uh, he, you know, it's, he followed the manuscript pretty well. So hmm. it's it's a pretty exciting story. It's really good. So that's awesome. Uh, I'm thrilled to get get a chance to do it. It yeah. seems like one of those classic illustrations where it would just be bug-eyed monsters and spaceships and stuff but it's it's more sophisticated than that so pretty cool so are are you doing like the cover for it and then inside work 
or is it just no, inside? I'm, well, I'm doing the cover as a embossed uh, plate uh, kind of thing with also a special outside box. They have names for all this stuff where yeah. it opens up some slide and then out there are different editions. I'm doing oh, okay. 15 color paintings and then I'm doing a whole bunch of chapter head uh, black and whites in mm, there as okay. well. So there's quite a bit of work that's going to be in this thing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. This it's sounds cool. this sounds okay. And are those actual pieces right there uh, um, for the other one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, these are for uh, the sun also rises. So I'm I'm just hanging them here to get them out of the way. Uh, <laughs> in a sense, uh, I'm having to paint them. They were they were I was trying to promise a client that they'd have them by Christmas and that's just not working out. Um, yeah. And I, I kept adding ideas in there. And so I started them, uh, you know, as a group and I had to paint them almost uh, not individually, but as a process. So I could let one dry and then move to the next one and let that dry and then come back to the first one. And yeah. I'm, I'm doing a different approach where I'm layering more with the paint. Mm. And uh, so it's kind of, it's been great because I didn't realize all these years of painting, you know, you, you let that, that uh, couple early layers dry and then you paint on it. And if you don't like it, you can wipe it off. You still have the first layers. <laughs> you yeah. still have that underpainting, which is great. And I huh. should have done that years ago, but anyway, I'm doing it now. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's the cool thing I think about painting in general is that, especially with oils, is that there seems to be like really no limit to like technique wise, like what you can do. Yeah. You know, there's so many different approaches. And um, yeah. yeah, I love it. My, um, my friend Grieger, he, he'll like send me pieces that he's working on and he'll be like, get so many colors, bro. <laughs> and like he's, <laughs> And like he'll send me this beautiful painting, and I'm like, oh, two, and he's like, yeah, you got it, because he, he like he gets so much out of it, and you just you can't believe that he's only using two colors basically, plus black and white. Wow. Um, and then he'll like say, okay, what colors do you think that is? And then I have to like guess, and if I'm right, he's like, whoa, I was like French ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah that's it. <laughs> I was like, Oh man. And from those two colors, it's amazing to see what you can do. It's an, it's, yeah. I mean, for me personally, like when I work with oils, I personally like to keep things limited. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's like, I remember watching this. Um, I think it was, it was Jeremy Lipking, um, like a, a demo that he did or something. And I remember being just like, what, what in the, this is way too over my head. He had like a hundred colors on his palette. It was insane. Wow. Wow. Like it was just like tons of different greens and then variations of pinks into red and oranges and all just tons of colors. Like it was wow. like squirting them all out and like, and that's it's great, but it, but it's like, that's crazy to me. Like <laughs> I, 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 I always feel like if I, like I, I want to, you know, I guess it, it's a little bit overwhelming because you, I mm -hmm. think with oil paint, it's one thing to understand color theory and that sort of a thing, but then, then like each brand is different. Each brand has different oh, yeah. reactions to other colors and that sort of a thing. Yeah. And I, I kind of, instead of buying violet, I like to just make violet from blue and red that I'm using mm, and it mm -hmm. creates the harmony. It automatically is going to go together and it's not like, you know, and the same with orange. I just, I don't buy orange. I make orange with the red I'm using and, um, it's inter interesting you said yeah. orange because lately I I built up the nerve to go buy a tube of orange. <laughs> I never <laughs> bought orange either. It was like, yeah. come on, you got red, you got yellow. I know. It just doesn't make one. sense to me. It's like, right. it's weird. Um, yeah. But, I always love that when people, like people have asked me like, like what flesh color do you use when you, when yeah. you, you know, it's like, what are you talking about? I use black <laughs> and I use yellow ochre and I use red and white that's basically it like yeah. it's pretty much i keep it i like to paint like that sort of zornish type palette mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i mean you know, you know you don't need like for me anyways i don't need like a billion colors right well i you know i'd always 
heard about that use i don't know four colors you can make everything out of four colors and yeah and i was limiting myself a lot and um over time i would add another color because i'd be at the at the art store and i'd look at these colors and go oh my god they're so gorgeous and, yeah 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 and i would i would buy one and then i would let it sit there and just stare at it and then and then i thought what am i what am i doing i'm, I'm not i don't have to live up to someone else's expectations about my color palette so yeah yeah i would put the color on well now at this stage in my career i'm just buying color if I like it, boom, it's, yeah. I'm going to use it. And I have, you know, established colors that I use, but uh, I don't have hundreds on there, maybe like Lip King, but uh, <laughs> I, I started to get the rainbow going on um, mm. and I'm not using all of it, which breaks my heart, but uh, cause I'm limiting, you know, that yeah. what I'm mixing to keep the harmonies, but because it's there, I have, I can look down at that palette and I start getting choices. Mm -hmm. and and that gives me ideas about mixing the next step so I've, i'm trying to get away from the the limitations and also limit when i need to limit myself and uh but it's it's fun to talk about the color and the ranges of color because everybody's got their approach to it and i can pick up information from everybody about that you know yeah which is pretty cool but there's always that idea out there that's like, oh, you know, you should do it the proper way. You should do it the correct yeah. way. And I'm like, nothing, nothing matters except what's on that canvas. Doesn't exactly. matter how you get there, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing for me. I, I feel that, that uh, I mean, I usually start off with like, like what you were saying, like, I'll start off with like a basic, you know, I keep it simple. But I will add in like, oh, I need I need a little bit more blue or or need that, you know. So I'll add that in there a little bit. Or, or um, I remember one time, I think it was a, uh, gosh, I think it was red oxide or is that right? Red oxide, red or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I just found this tube. I didn't even know what I had. I'm like, that's a really interesting color. And I started playing with it. I'm like, whoa! It, it was like butter and like and I started like <laughs> getting really nice flesh tones that were like really cool. Uh, uh, just just playing around with it yeah so that that's always fun i remember when i was in art school um it was really funny because i was all about experimenting i was trying to figure things out and uh i had mm -hmm. never painted from life before uh with oils and um our our instructor was he was he had a very specific ways you you had to paint mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. he would he would um put out i remember he put he, we, we had to go buy certain a certain palette of paint and then we had to um do these portraits or these model poses with this with you know but i was refusing to use black and he was getting really mad at me <laughs> he was like he's like you're there's there's no black on your palette and i'm like well there's no black there and that that's how i was <laughs> seeing things i was like there's no black there and he's like well, no, you know, see these dark shadows and just, I go, yeah, but I mix that with uh, French ultramarine blue and, you know, the lizard and crimson and everything. I'm getting the dark enough, but there's no, I don't see any black. Mm -hmm. And so I was getting this argument with him about like, and I was like, show me where the black is. And I was like, I see, I still see no black. There's no black in, in reality, unless you're looking in a dark, dark box or, you know, that, but other than that, like even my sweatshirt, this is not black. It, it's got all this color in it, you know? Yeah, and it's not just it's not just solid black. So I, he he was really funny. But then, all of a sudden, on like a week or so later, we're doing a different pose, and that's when I started using this Zorn thing that I didn't know was the Zorn thing. I was just experimenting with yellow ochre, black, yeah. um, cad red, I think, or lizard and crimson. I can't remember which one I started with, and then white, and that was it. Mm. And wow. my dad is the one that told me that he goes, "Oh, that's like the Zorn palette." And then I started looking into that and realizing, oh, this is interesting. But the funny thing is, is I, after I gave <laughs> him all this crap about not using black, now I'm using this really limited palette with black. And he's like, you're not, why are you using black now? I go, it's not black. It's my blue. <laughs> like, so I get, I was like, I was like, so I mixed the black with the red and a little bit of white. This is my violet. And I mix, you know, and I'm, you know, he was just like, what are you doing? Like, 
It was funny. Uh, but well, I, I, I always I, thought it was like a, a school I thought was a place where you're supposed to experiment, right? So well, yeah, you know, I, and that that's a that's a huge topic because in art school they want you to experiment, but they want you to learn. And I, when I went to art school, it was all about experimentation, not about learning. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't don't learn what came before because that's all out the window now. We don't do that. Well, <laughs> I needed to get that in order to experiment. You know, when we're when we're in school, we're experimenting, trying to get these color mixtures and stuff we know nothing about. You know, and, and I would see these other students painting and suddenly they're discovering ultramarine blue as if it yeah. just dropped to the planet that day or something. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's not experimenting. Using the tube color straight from the tube. That's not, yeah. <laughs> that's not it. Uh, but it's, you'll see that occurring even today in the art schools. And I know what's going on in their head. I know what they're trying to do, but they, they get to the solution too fast. Mm. They're not allowing the time to understand and develop the color. And that, I think that needs coaching. I think, you know, people that paint and have been down the road of painting uh, need the help and say, go this way, go that way for now and allow them to uh, discover even minimal stuff that then can launch them into ex better experimentation. But when I was in art school, it was throw the colors out the window. Yeah. Uh, paint without paint. I was in a cinematography class where the guy, one kid brought in his, his finished piece. And it was a projector, an empty projector and an empty reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And that was his and piece? That was his art piece. That was his cinema. He he focused the light on the recorder mm. so that the reels would bounce light on the wall. And mm. then he pointed to the wall and said, that's my movie. And I thought, boy, is he going to get it now? And the instructor went astronomical. He just Genius. thought it was the greatest thing he'd <laughs> yeah. ever seen in his life. And he walks away with an A. I walked away with a C minus or something like oh, that God. because I was editing somebody's film. <laughs> film is incredibly uh, creative, you know, oh, yeah. wise, editing wise. Oh my God. It's well, so that's fun. also got to be like, that's a great thing for, I would think for you because your, your, your illustration work is like, I, I, I consider it fine art, but like at Thanks. the same time, it's like, very cinematic like there's a lot of you know like mm -hmm. I, love, I love the the angles that you choose um and it, it does feel almost like a still shot of a of a film you know um yeah i'm very influenced by cinema yeah. i love that stuff i, lo I love the widescreen the horizontal because that feels yeah. natural to me i think we see that way you know we don't see in circles and we don't see in squares and stuff i mean you know but rectangular i think yeah we do. <laughs> exactly uh, have, yeah. uh, have you seen um what's it called D uh, dune the new dune movie i haven't yet i wanted to go to oh. the theater see it on the big screen but now oh you really got to see that it's it's like it's a good movie um i like the story and, and you know the characters and all that kind of stuff but as far as like visually it's like you you can basically i, I think you could pause every single second of that movie and it's a work mm -hmm. of art Oh, I mean, wow. every shot is like, whoa. Oh, nice. Like, I was almost like not even paying attention to the movie sometimes because I was just like, Whoa. it just looks so good. <laughs> oh, like, it's it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I tell you, there are certain directors that understand composition more so than other directors. It doesn't make the film bad if you don't understand it but when you do understand depth and and foreground middle ground and background you yeah. can control that in such a way that the viewer just doesn't even realize they're being manipulated into the story that way mm. that's that's what i love is that bring the viewer in get them a part of of what you're saying there you know, and, and that the compositional skills takes a long time to understand. Well, it took me a long time to understand, but uh, I, with my students, that's like key number one thing uh, is working with composition mm. first so that they never look at the page without 
trying to figure out how to place an element or whatever. I don't, I try not to allow them to just mindlessly run the pencil on the page. They're constantly thinking of placement, arrangement, depth. So I guess that's my, my kind of stickler. Your guy was like, yeah. you know, I want you to paint with certain colors and, and I, I'm probably <laughs> the guy that <laughs> wants them to compose first. Well, but. see, that would have been, that would have been amazing. I think to have something like that. I mean, for me, it was like, I was all about trying to capture what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, I remember there was this model that I, I painted and she was, she was sitting there like this, like, <laughs> just like that. And, and she's like, and for like hours. And that's what I painted her like, and I might've slightly exaggerated, but not on purpose, you know, you? like, yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's hard sometimes to turn that off, you know, mm, mm -hmm. and he was like, like, we're standing in front of her. She's right there. And he goes, why, why do you make her frumpy? And I'm like, what, what do you mean? Why do I make her frumpy? You make her frumpy. Why'd you make her frumpy? And I'm like, <laughs> and well, she's standing right there. And I go, well, look at her. I mean, that, that's what she's doing. She's, I mean, she's, and he goes, he goes, yes, but that doesn't mean you have to paint her that way. And I'm like, I'm sorry, okay. I, I'm not into this, like, <laughs> paint someone better than they look thing. Like, that's not yeah, how, right. Because like, I would notice he would do a demo. There was this guy once sitting in that he came and posed for us. Um, average looking guy. And mm -hmm. we're all standing around watching him do a demo of this guy. And I'm like, it looks nothing like him. He made the guy look like he's like this, you know, like some star football player is all like chiseled jaw, just like this i'm like that's not what he looks like <laughs> what's going on i mean the oh, actual wow. brush strokes were great the coloring and everything was great but it didn't look sure. like him and i realized wow. he he's always he was into like like i like like idealizing making, yeah making everybody look better he's like art's about you know making them like no it's not about that <laughs> it's not at all well to yeah me. you run into some folks that just uh look at the structure and and want to sort of repeat that perfect sort of Roman look. Yeah. You know, that yeah. everybody gets the Roman look. <laughs> it's like this formulaic weird yeah. thing. And it's like, I mean, I, I like I get really like um lost in in someone's face. Like, yeah, like I'll notice, like I, I try to look at the big shapes and break down. Mm -hmm. But once I start breaking down and like kind of going in to the, the face, That's I notice. Like, oh, there's like, there's like this crease here that curves this way and it creates this shape, which goes into this shape and this shape and this. And I'm just like all these little things I'm noticing and while I'm painting mm -hmm. and, and I can't help it, but it looks like the person when I'm done. Like, yeah, it's, but like, I don't understand how you could not, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Right. No, I, it's I, extremely important. And I, I mean, that is the structure of painting, painting yeah. a, a portrait of someone is, yeah, you do start out with those generalizations. Mm -hmm. and then you start to break them down. Because at a certain point, like I'm painting Harrison Ford, I have to figure out how does it, what makes it Harrison Ford? It's not, I'm not going to paint my eyebrow to get Harrison Ford or the classic yeah. eyebrow. I got to I gotta study and look exactly at how it angles and it sits in that socket all that sort of thing you know from mouth nose everything you know it's it's really funny i've i've had um certain jobs have done where the client is like okay we want you to paint it like i had to paint um uh bruce wayne uh young bruce wayne and his parents like a family portrait and wow. they were like we want uh what's his name um his dad i can't remember something wayne um, anyways, Bruce oh, Wayne's yeah. father, Thomas Wayne, mm -hmm. we want Thomas Wayne to look a lot like, um, oh man, that guy from Mad Men, um, uh, John Hamm, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. So we want, we want him to look a lot like John Hamm, but it can't be John Hamm, but they sent me all these references of John Hamm. They, so, Oof. and I had, it has to be realistic. Right. And I'm oh. like, Whoa. so, so I'm looking at, I'm, cr I'm trying to create this this image and so what i ended up doing 
was I ended up drawing John Hamm um, accidentally. I'm trying to look at his features and trying to draw, come up with a different guy, but it still looked like John Hamm. And I'm like, oh, like I'm trying to not. And then, and then what I did was I got made sure all the proportions were exact, but then I started to change things. Like I, I, th- I made his nose thinner. Um, mm, I yeah. changed the shape of, of his nostrils and I, I made the space between his nose and his mouth a little bit different. And I, tra- I changed the lips and yeah. I, I brought his hairline down more and I made his, mm-hmm. his hair thicker. And um, right. I did all these things. I even changed the way his ears were the, the, the shape between the eyes and the eyebrows. And it still yeah. looked like him. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Makes they, sense. yeah. And they were like, it still looks like John Hamm. I'm like, I don't know why, because I've changed all these things and it's still, it was so frustrating. Um, I was like, I can't not do draw what I'm seeing, I guess. Yeah. Somehow, but no, as, again, you know, that, uh, that beginning structure is so important. And once, once you lay that down, I guess, you know, <laughs> it's tough to get away from that. This length <sighs> of the nose and the separation in the eyes, you can start to change. Yeah. You know, I was telling students the other day to exaggerate when they draw. Uh, so if they're working from the model, say in a, in a sketch class or something, uh, to go ahead and cartoon it in a sense, go ahead and stretch and exaggerate it. I don't mean like cartoon, like peanuts. I mean, yeah, something like you would do where you exaggerate the forms and shapes and stuff where you mm-hmm. push and pull and when I did that in art school, I suddenly realized, Oh my God, I'm now I'm learning the anatomy because I'm, I'm twisting the length of the leg and the, and I'm making these long fingers. And and now I'm actually studying the Mm. anatomy uh, because I wasn't worried about getting it correct. Yeah. Then I could see it later on. I was able to make it correct because I let myself go on that. And uh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, I, so I've been encouraging them to push and pull like that. They'll learn drawing a lot faster, I think. So when when you're painting, okay. So first of all, do you know how much of a badass you are? Because like, <laughs> I, I look, I'm looking at some of your paintings, like you sent me that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Yeah, and I'm like, this is like, in a way, it's almost cocky. <laughs> like like these this brush yes. strokes, they're just like yes. it's like. <laughs> I'm so awesome. Yes, I am. Like all these brush strokes. They're like, because it's so like I look at the painting smaller and it it's like it all comes together. But then I think it was, I think it's like Obi-Wan Kenobi or something. This the one mm. I think. Oh uh Kenobi cover. Yeah, yeah I, was, I shared that with you. Yeah. So when and then when you look at it close, it's just like this the reflected light from the lightsaber is just like fat, blobby, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> like it's, it's it's like frustrating yes, i love that <laughs> yeah well, that's what i want to hear from another painter i want i want you yeah. to, to see that um yeah i want the viewer to see it too but it's really fun to talk about the paint with another painter because you pick up on yeah. on what it takes to to lay that down you know i work with the students and and demo this stuff and i at this stage i am showing them this is how you this is how you put it down. This is yeah. exactly how you put it down. You have to put it down and leave it. Don't, I don't want to see anybody yeah. doing this. So no. that's what you like. You don't, you don't like layer your paint and then get your other brush and kind of blend it in together. It's just like, um, it's like almost like sculpting. It seems like. Right? Yeah, it is a lot like sculpting. There's a, a bunch of combination now. Um, blending of not just blending paint but blending technique so sometimes laying it down leaving it there and then come back in with a brush and taking these two planes or these two marks of the planes and then brush them between them to make it to roll an edge mm. and then leave a certain edge sharp so um i mean it's it's not too difficult to explain it's just that when you're watching it happen you're not sure because you're outside my head you're not sure which where i'm going with the 
which technique at what time. Mm. So what I'm loving now is blending all that together. So I spent a lot of years blending and I spent a lot of years looking at angles and, and planes. Mm -hmm. And now I've, I've become more confident with going, that's a plane, boom, put it down. That's a shape, bang, put it down, take these two together, leave those two apart. And I'm deciding all the way through as I go, we'll, we'll probably talk about it when we look at the, yeah. at the work, but so like when I'm, when I'm, when I'm painting somebody, um, you know, the, the first part is getting the drawing down and everything, but then when it comes to painting, I kind of see everything as shapes, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, even like, I know there's planes obviously, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at the, the shapes that are created and how they relate to one another. Like I, it's, it's weird. I don't even think I'm trying to do that. It's just like, that's how, what ends up happening is mm -hmm. um, it's, it almost, it's almost I kind of, I guess, think of painting as like putting a puzzle together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah, it's not like, it's not like coloring in a coloring book, you know? <laughs> no, no, it's not. Those, and those shapes are so extremely important. I, I try to figure out when I'm talking with the students, what they're going to look at first. And it's a, always a struggle between value and shape. You yeah. I'm saying you're, you're really looking at the two at the same time when it gets really tough, break them apart, nail the value and put that value down as the shape mm. that should, that should get you there. One, one guy that I, I'm working with has been uh, with me a couple semesters in the smart school class. We're doing, he's in my portrait class and, um, he's he was rough i'm not kidding you i mean the, mm -hmm. this guy was putting down paint way too fast trying to think his mind was scattered and the brushwork was just all over the place he was capturing nothing he was laying yeah. down paint for sure and it was just <laughs> let's use the term rough <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um the past two semesters I said, whoa, whoa, I know what's going on. Hold on. We got to slow it way down, way yeah. down. I said, you got to put a brush stroke down and, and take your hand off and leave it there. Then you're going to, the next stroke is not anywhere near that, or it can be near it, but not on top of it. Yeah. So you're going to put it next to it. And then you're going to put the next one down slow. And then he would bring this in and it had calmed down a little bit and then it would go crazy. <laughs> and then I, after a while, I said, here's what you're going to do. You're going to give me five brush strokes next week. You're going to look at this. You're going to copy that color. You're going to put it here. You're going to copy that color and put it there. Do not do any more. <laughs> <laughs> and he brought it in the next week. And it looked really good. And it slowed him hmm. down to the point. You should see what he's doing now. It's remarkable. That's he's awesome. Moving through it. He's thinking. He's placing. He's capturing. Uh, that's one of my every now and then it gets a little crazy but. my fit one of my um i guess most common things that i and uh, that i've said to students is slow down like it, the, people seem to be so it's like for example when like I, I asked them to do you know a bunch of thumbnail drawings um and then from the thumbnails i want loose loose thumbnails from that do one tight drawing like picks pick one that worked the best and then develop that as a drawing and they'll send they'll they won't send any thumbnail sketches or anything they'll send like a black and white value painting i'm like yeah this is not what we're why did you send me this like that and oh i just wanted you know i just really felt like getting into the painting it's like that's not the assignment that's not yeah. i'm trying to figure out where you are and like and then and then when we start getting into like the values and all that stuff they're they're trying to do color paintings i'm like you're not ready for color yet. Like, like, and, and yeah. some of the, some of the students have, I've actually said, Hey, no color. The rest of this class, just wow. black and white, because you have to, you don't, I, I just feel like people are so excited to, to, mm -hmm. to they want to be an artist. They want to you yeah. know, do all stuff, but it's like, you, yeah, it's not like it's, it's, it's not like something you can just, you can't just skip ahead. You know, you have to pay your dues. You know, it's like, <laughs> like, like, it was... like, like I'm, 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 I'm doing stand up comedy now, and I've been working really hard. I go out every week and I do stand up. Um, I'm wow. not, I can't, I can't just 
do a Netflix special. Like I got to <laughs> right. put in the years and the time of, you know, playing in, in crappy places and people, you know, hating me or, and then loving me. And then this didn't work here, but it killed there. And I have to go back and rewrite and rewrite. And like, I can't just wow. also be like, I'm doing a special. <laughs> like, right. All like, right. Same thing with like, if, if you, uh. you can't just do a Greg Manchester painting. If you have, if you're just learning how to paint, you gotta like take the steps in. Oh, uh, it's just, yeah, it's, 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 I think one of my greatest gifts, I think, I don't know where I got this from, maybe from my dad is, but somehow I have patience. I have a mm. lot of patience and, wow. but, oh, but not with certain things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, well, I, like, like I had my first two daughters when I was in my early twenties. Um, it's way different than having babies now in my early forties. Cause, Cause now I'm like, God damn it. I said, don't touch that. <laughs> like, like daddy needs to take a nap. <laughs> like I don't have patience for certain things anymore, but like when it comes to like art and like, and, and then that you have to be able to, you have to earn it. You can't yeah. just like, yeah, it's not, it's not like magic, you know? And, and you know, the thing about that is that when I was coming up through the field, I didn't have teachers uh, that uh, talked about that. And what I try to give the students now is be able to condition them to understand the process takes time. Yeah. And all they need to do is hear it. All you need to do is tell them to slow down. All you need to do is tell them, look, you're going to be at this level for a certain amount of time until you can grasp this thing. And once you grasp it, it's yeah. going to snowball. But you have to be patient enough to get to making the snow into a snowball. And once it gets rolling, then, and that's exciting. And if they hear that, they get a little, a, actually a bunch more patient about what's going on. Yeah. And then, then I've got them. As soon as they're patient, I've got them and I can step them through it. But um, I remember this. I remember, I remember yeah. diving into paintings all the time and thinking, oh God, later on, they, I wish I'd have planned for that. Cause had I done that yeah. in the beginning, I might've been able to avoid that problem. And the problem was that it sucked. And I, I still remember a guy at the studio that looked at one of my pieces I was feeling really good about laying the, it was pastel and some other junk. And I was feeling good about laying it down. It was looking pretty good. Well, mm. technique wise, that was fine. But compositionally, it blew. He said, it's spotty. Yeah. Ah, and I, yeah. that word to me just, oh, it shot down my spine. And I realized, oh, my <laughs> God. That's just, I will never do that again. And I worked hard from that point on. Yeah, that's that's the thing too, especially like, cause you do a, a lot more like full scenes um, characters. Like, like I, I just imagine they're, like I said before, like they're epic, almost scenes from a movie where you, you don't just start that painting. You gotta like plan and pre pre-plan, like sketch right. it out, figure out, move characters around, get the right, you know, and, yeah you know they're but like you see like early pe people that are early on in their career in, in this that they're just like they jump into it right away you know yeah <laughs> it's, it's like yeah. it's crazy it drives me nuts um <laughs> my, my wife is a is a really good painter um that's actually a piece the, the big one behind is one that she's she was started oh, wow. a while ago wow but um she it drives me crazy how she approaches things but i don't interfere in her work mm. And, mm. you know that's her art and unless she asks me something yeah. um and the same goes both ways but um i'm the kind of person that like like i work on my sketch i get it just right um composition everything i want yeah. and then i print it out to the canvas i want to if i'm doing an oil or something and i transfer it so it's perfect it's exactly where i want the painting to be um, and I just, and it'll be like in the marks, like marks everywhere. So I know, and I'm, so mm -hmm. I don't have to like, like, you know, just kind of like guess, you know, it's all there. Right. I, I prepare my palette. I start blocking it in and I have it down and now I can just paint. It's all there. Yeah. And, and when I'm done, I clean my palette. It's organized. <laughs> my wife, she, 
<laughs> has no organization. <laughs> like her, like this painting here, she doesn't pre sketch or anything. She just mm. starts blocking in the face, just without, you know, looking at a small photograph okay. and just like, just trying to draw it and doesn't like it, wipes it away, does it again. She like redid the face like 10 times and then finally got, and then, and then I think she painted it one more time again. Like it was just, it's just all over the place. Wow. And to me, I'm like, oh, this is hurting me. Like, like <laughs> but, but that's how she wants to do it. And then like her palette is there's no order. There's, there's just, it's just a big pile everywhere. There's, um, there's no order to the, where the colors go. It's just, and then she, and then she doesn't clean it when she's done. Oh, and then no. she's got paint in her hair and it's all over yeah. the place. And I'm like, but when she's done, she's got a beautiful painting. You know, she, that's yeah. her, that's her way to do it. And so that's, it yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all yeah. about what's on the surface, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it'll be, it's funny. Cause like when she hasn't gotten to paint for a, a couple of years, basically, because the, we, we had two babies. Yeah. Um, so I actually got her an iPad. Uh, she's been doing some digital painting just whenever she can, just to kind of keep the art alive a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. She's naturally just a really good painter. Um, but cool. it's funny. I can, I remember times when she's painting, and I'll come and I'll just stand there and I'm just like, oh, mm. like <laughs> I want to say something, but I can't. <laughs> and like I'm watching her, she's having a hard time with something. And I'm like, eh. just, I'll, yeah. I'll see. I'll see <laughs> some of these guys painting like at the illustration masterclass that I look down at their palette. They're saying they're having trouble. I look at their palette. There's yellow next to the blue. There's green over here next to the red. And this, yeah. They're just putting paint all over the that's what i'm thing. saying like her palette is like but it works for her somehow <laughs> like she 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 does great and it, it, i'm just like i like it it would i don't know if it's like if i have some kind of ocd or something but like mm. i can't focus if there if there's like a if i'm if i'm working on something even on my computer here and there's mm -hmm. a, a piece of paper i i, my, I don't like messes i'm around yeah me. If yeah. there's like a piece of paper right here and I'm like drawing, I'm like, I can't do anything <laughs> until I get rid of this paper and figure out where it goes because it's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm very similar. I can't believe it, Jason, uh, because <laughs> I will straighten my area before I dive into a painting because yeah. I, I can't look Excuse over me. and happen to see that billing statement or something that i yeah. need to deal with I, i've got to be a hundred percent focused if i have a cat hair like on my shoulder yeah. i can see it out of the corner of my eye <laughs> yeah. i gotta deal with that first yeah and then I can paint. yeah uh, but that's the kind of focus you know? yeah yeah it's true it's true it's funny man um but you know what yeah. we've been uh we've been talking for like about 50 minutes it says wow um Didn't so that long yeah but here's what we're gonna do everybody um, so as many of you hopefully know, is I started a Patreon page where, um, I've been basically doing one video a week, uh, where I do, I draw for like between one to four hours or so it depends. And so there's literally hours and hours and hours and hours of videos available already on Patreon. So there's, there's that. And then, excuse me, then the other deal I have is once a month. I have an awesome artist like Greg on, and we're going to, um, and, you know, we just had a fun talk right now, but now we're going to actually get into showing his work and talking about the process, looking at his paintings, his sketches, and going through them and just learning more about his technique and his process. Um, and you can catch that on patreon.com slash Jason Seiler. Um, and until next time, uh, thank you so much uh, for chatting uh, with everybody, Greg. And we will see you all on the flippity flop. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs>